Lions TV, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, even maybe. Whenever you may be watching this, wherever you may be watching this, it's being filmed at 9.37 on a Thursday morning. And I'll be honest, it's very rare that I'm out of bed at this ungodly hour, but I'm still buzzing after Tuesday and desperate to talk football. It could also have something to do with that Thursdays is my snooker day when my mate feel the power, and I absolutely love it. But listen, I understand this isn't a snooker show, and before anyone wants to start, I look nothing like Stephen Lee, the ex-snooker player, so let's not, get, let's not get going on that one. This is a football show. We're going to cover Tuesday's brilliant away win against Bristol City at Ashton Gate, and we're going to look ahead to this Saturday's away fixture against Philip Koku's Derby. But before that, we're going to head back to Tuesday night's win at Ashton Gate. So with Sean Hutchinson back to full fitness, Gary Rowett reverted to the three centre-halves. There was a lot of R's in that sentence, wasn't there? That was so successful away at Swansea. A few S's thrown in for good measure. And guess what? It worked. Another brilliant away performance. We are unbeaten now in our last three games against Swansea, Birmingham, and the aforementioned Bristol City with seven points from those three games. That is a very, very strong return. Yeah, you know, it's difficult to know, again, what the exact formation was. I think it was a big man in goal. I think it was a three centre-halves here with Murray Wallace here, Marlon Romeo here, Sean Williams and Jason Malumbi just there, but Vardson and Jed White behind Tom Bradshaw, I couldn't bother to do the app thing because other people have been copying it just for a change, but um, yeah, that is the team that we went with and it was, listen, what a fucking performance, what a performance, not just the win, but the performance and I've seen Bristol City fans saying online, praising us, saying we, we could have beaten by more and we could have done, we started the game in a very shaky early uh, exchange, didn't we, Jake Cooper gets caught on the ball, short ball, Therefore, it gets in, goes round Bolkowski, but Bolkowski, he goes round Bolkowski, but Bolkowski, it takes him a while to get round Bolkowski, by which point defenders have come back, Bolkowski's back on his feet, and we scramble the ball to safety, bodies on the line, giving everything for the team, great defending all round from everyone, great energy to get back and, uh, and throw, say, throw their bodies in the, in, the, in the line of fire, shall we say. And after that, it was total, total domination. I, I do sometimes forget to say this, by the way, and someone pulled me up in my YouTube comments, he said, when Marlon Romeo plays well, he never mentions it. And do you know what? I think you're right. And I do mention it at the time, but forget to mention it the next day. Um, not in a Forest post-match. I was a bit vague on who did play well. But Marlon Romeo, I thought, played very well. Why can't I say Marlon Romeo today? Fuck knows. Marlon Romeo played well that day. And I thought Marlon Romeo, uh, along with Jason Malumbi, was, was a very close toss-up for man of the match against Bristol City. Marlon was brilliant going forward, and he always is brilliant going forward, but he really seems to sort his defensive duties out as well, and that has to be praised to Gary Rowett, as I often mention, who was a right-back during his career. So I think a lot of the players are clearly... Well, all the players are like new men, and they're clearly thriving under Gary Rowett, but I'm hoping, and it's looking like, that Marlon Romeo could be one of the biggest benefactors of the G. Rowett effect. And listen, as I said, it was a total domination we was exciting to watch. We was brilliant going forward. We showed brilliant patterns of play. We was getting on the overlaps. We were getting balls into the box. When we didn't have the ball, we was we was high pressing, really high pressing. We weren't giving them a second to settle on the ball. We're just putting them under pressure constantly. And it's it's things you see teams do against us. And then we ask the question, why the fuck don't we do that? And under our old manager, we like to say very compact. And he was he was content to let wingers have the ball. And, you know, that said, that was fine in League One. But when it comes to Championship, better standard across of the ball. And we was getting undone by it. Now, you know, when the, when the wide men are getting the ball, Murray Wallace was already there a lot of the time. He's reading the game well when he was shutting them down. Murray Wallace as well, by the way. I know a few people dig him out saying we need a left back. I don't understand why we need left back. We're, we're flying and Murray Wallace is playing very well, in my opinion. So I'm not understanding, you know, people's theories on that one. It would be brilliant to spend five million on a left back and get Roberto Carlos out of retirement. But... In this day and age, Murray Wallace, for what we paid for him and what we're getting out of him as a player, I don't think you can knock it. Marlon was doing the same. They was all doing the same. We were just on. They, they, they couldn't even sit and have a first touch. And I'll be honest with you, they, they kept the ball quite well, Bristol City. Especially in the first half, they retained the ball well, but they just couldn't advance with it. And they kept having to go backwards and sideways. And as a result, it kept ending up back with Ashley Williams in the back four. And, and then they kept trying, eventually they kept thinking, no, we can't progress here, we're going to have to try something a little bit different, you know, a little bit of a killer ball, maybe earlier than we would like, and it just wasn't coming off. And that was that was full credit to us. When we had the ball, we retained it very well. And listen, it was just a perfect performance. The goal comes, Marlon Romeo, down the right, brilliant exchanges with Jeb Wallace. Jeb Wallace, phenomenal, just just wow. We're not going to keep hold of him if he continues to play like that. And I think I will cover this in a separate video because people are shitting their pants and I don't want Jed to go, and I can see how brilliant Jed's been. 
But I'll be honest with you, if someone offers 10 million, one, the club will take it, and two, I would as well. And that may be a little bit controversial. But as good as he is, I think we're going to be safe this season. And £10 million could go a long way into the Gary Rowick January transfer fund. So I don't want him to go, but I think, in my opinion, it, look, it looks imminent. The writing's on the wall, and he's just... He's just brilliant. He's just absolutely brilliant. He cuts inside. Great trickery. Get around a few players. And he hits a left foot shot. He, listen, Jed can do no more. It's cold, wet conditions at Ashton Gate on Tuesday. The goalkeeper, Daniel Bent, who I've um, given high praise to in pre-match and previously on this channel, should be throwing his out on it. But he doesn't, and he sneaks in the near post. But listen, as I said, Jed can only do what he can do. And after that, it could have been more than, it could have been more than one. Um... And we pressed them, we pressed them, we just, we, just, we just totally outplayed them. Their fans were getting restless. The 300 or so mill fans had travelled, full, full credit to you boys and girls. And if you was wondering why I wasn't there, you didn't see my live stream, I couldn't get there on Tuesday. No one from the channel was going, no one I knew was driving, only one group of boys I knew was driving, and they had a full car, or so they told me, maybe they just don't like me. But um, yeah, I couldn't get there, and I was gutted Tuesday, but oh, there you go, I watched it on the box, and we still got content out on the channel, which seems to have gone down better than if I do go to the matches. So maybe maybe they're saying to look at going forward and I'll send others out on away day excursions. But yeah, listen, half time, couldn't ask any more. You did wonder if a little you know a little storm was going to come early in the second half. And I don't think it ever really did. If anything, I thought we was better in the second half than we was in the first for a very long period. And we just continued to just, just to play brilliantly. We get the second goal. Jeb Wallace uh, absolutely nailed on. Perfect delivery. And six foot seven of him, Jake Cooper gets up. Brilliant downward header amongst bodies. He's missed easier chances this season without an absolute doubt. Uh, one last week on the telly against Nottingham Forest. But Juicy Jake fully redeems himself. As I said, very difficult header coming across the ball amongst bodies. Heads it down and it bounces, skids off the wet turf into the roof of Daniel Bentley's net. And after that, what was we all thinking? Let's be honest. For fuck's sake, don't lose it now. But we continue to press. Subs came on. And again, you know, uh, but Vardson and Bradshaw came off and on come Ben Thompson and Matt Smith, which give us a different dynamic because the ball was going out to Bradshaw and it was nothing, you know, it's not Bradshaw's fault. It wasn't sticking. So again, the Gary Rowett effect rolls on and he does this thing where he just goes, right, OK, we're under pressure. We're not going to sit and wait for you to equalise. We're going to go the other way and give you something to think about in the final third. We're going to change up what we've been doing and, and change, change the format of the game. Um, it didn't work. It didn't work. Bristol City came forward. And listen, the Mill players were dead on their feet. And you can't blame them for that. We absolutely outplayed Bristol City for a long period of that game. A very top side in this division. Let's have it right. And they'll go close. They're a good side. But it was the best performance I've seen for a long time from a Mill side. Especially away from home. It was absolutely brilliant. Swansea was a good win away from home. But we was very compact. It was slightly dull at times. But we did what we had to do. And we got the job over the line. This was a different kettle of fish. We was absolutely... Brilliant. Abs the best I've seen in a long time. And I could tell after the game because my social, my, my phone was going absolutely mad non-stop. It a, it's a real... Gary Rowett's brought a real good feel factor back to the club. And, um, yeah, so they eventually get one back, don't they? And then everyone... I'm screaming at the telly, as I'm sure every fucking single one of us was. They get one back. Ball goes into the box, comes out to their substitute, who hits one, left footed. It does deflect, yes, but it doesn't... It deflects, but it doesn't really change the direction of the ball for one. It gives it a slight bit more pace. That's all I'll say. Bolkowski, and maybe I've come to expect too much from him because he's a fantastic shot stopper for us. He dies full length. He gets his hand on it. He gets a full hand on it. But he only manages to push it into the side netting. I understand it's difficult conditions. And I understand it did take a deflection. But listen, as I've said on this channel, I've got to be honest with you. If that's Jordan Archer, I'll be blaming him. So I cannot... I cannot, um, not blaming him, he could have done better in my opinion, I think Bart will feel that by his own standards, but it didn't matter, after that I was absolutely queuing up, and the only slight criticism I could have is, okay we got to sit deep, we got to defend this league, but we was almost sitting too deep at times, we were just plotted on the edge of our box, and maybe you know that was the players, I can't knock them, they was, as I said they give everything, and they was obviously dead on their feet, but... I just feel it was slightly too deep and just inviting them on too much. They, they was going to have pressure. Don't get us wrong. In that last five minutes plus injury time, the dreaded 10 minutes that always seems to um, besmirch us in previous, um, in previous games under previous managers. Besmirch me? Is that the right word? I don't know, but I'm going to use it. Um, and then eventually they get a chance, ball over the top, and Bolkowski atones for, maybe not atones for, but he, he gets back to his best. He shows us what he's all about and what we know and have come to love from the big dog in goal. And he saves with his feet brilliantly. After that, 
They absolutely slung the kitchen sink at us, and Jake Cooper won in injury time. In between the 85th minute and the 95th minute, Jake Cooper won eight headers. He was brilliant, Jake Cooper. They was all brilliant. Bodies on the line, and I can't really praise him anymore. Full time, brilliant to see uh, over the moon for the fans that went. Brilliant pictures on social from, from the club, and then obviously yesterday, the, the video they had at full time, it was on Gary Rowett and Gary Rowett and all the players. You can see that Rowett really has brought a togetherness. I won't say brought a togetherness because I, I feel that the togetherness was already there. But I really feel Gary Rowett has got getting the best out of our players, which is what well, it's obvious. He's coming to have it right. Six games unbeaten now, three wins and three draws. So things are looking up, and dare we dream, dare we look to the playoffs. We are only three, I think, three or four points off it. And um, we're going to Derby Saturday, and we're in with a real chance. But let's move on to it now. Saturday's away trip to Philip Cuckoo's Derby. Derby County, oh wow. Fat Frank left in the summer and was replaced by ex-Barcelona and Holland international, the aforementioned Philip Cuckoo. Their season has been a bit of a car crash. <laughs> Literally, it's been a bit of a car crash. I won't go into that, but um, yeah, all sorts of problems within the club. They've had to sack their club captain, Richard Keogh, which I said I wouldn't go into, but now I've told you. Um, I don't think it's any secret, it's been all over the press and they are having a fucking dismal, dismal time. They currently sit 16th in the table, three places and four points behind us. They are without a win in their last four games, having scored only twice along the way and one of which was a penalty. Yeah, they are struggling. We had got a good result up there last year, didn't we? Jeb Wallace got the winner. Shock. On repeat, please. And I think we could have a little bit of joy against Saturday, if I'm honest. What team will Gary Rowick go with? I think he'll stick with what happened at Bristol City. There is no, absolutely no reason to change it. And I'll be amazed if he changes any one of that starting eleven. I don't think he will. Um, whether they'll all last again will be another question. And he'll have subs, a very strong bench ready and waiting to come on. See, I'm going to go for an unchanged side from uh, Gary the Gaffer. Derby's one to watch is going to be Martin Wackhorn. Obviously, he spent time on loan at the Den in 2014. And he gave us a little bit of a torrid time, didn't he? Back when he played for Ipswich, I think he could have been around Christmas time or towards the end of the season. We went to Ipswich needing a win. I think we drew 2-2 and he, he gave Jake Cooper and Sean Hutchinson, who obviously both will play on Saturday, a little bit of a torrid time that day. So, yeah, Waghorn's the one to watch, but it's prediction time. So this is your pre-match prediction and here we go. I am going to go for, whew, dare I say it? Dare I, dare I fucking say it? I think we're going to go all out here. I'm going to go for a 3-0. Me will win. What about that? Am I mad? Tom Bradshaw, Jeb Wallace, and Sean Hutchinson up from the back. I don't know why. I've just got a beautiful, beautiful feeling that we are going to get a strong victory away from home. And really, if they haven't already, the championship, we're going to start taking note after Saturday. So that is your lot for this pre-match prediction. Here comes the bad news. Get ready to shoot some pelters at me either on here or on social media. I'm not going to be there Saturday. I cannot get there on Saturday. I have an event on at the Elton Terrace Club, an evening with Ray Parler. My mates and the best podcast in town under the cosh. Well, not in town, they're from up north. They are coming down. They want to do a Christmas show with Ray Parler. I've sorted them to do it with Ray Parler at one of my sponsor's venues, the Elton Terrace Club. And I promised them I'd go along and have a Christmas drink with them. And as a result, I'm not going to get to Derby. So feel free to uh, fire shots at me. I no doubt I'll get some shit for it. But listen, it is what it is, boys and girls. And I've had this booked in for a very, very long time. That's why I was breaking my bollocks to try and get to Bristol City. But... Do not panic. Kenny will be there and he will call you in at full time along with any other the, of the Omaras who may or may not be going. I haven't actually asked them yet. But there'll be content out on Lions TV. Again, listen, I apologise I can't get it but it's genuinely one of them things and if you want to have a keep having a pop at me, I'll go off my fucking head. No, I won't really. What I'll do is I will look through and I will count the amount of games I've been at since this channel started and it's, I'll tell you what, I probably missed 10 over three seasons. 15 at a push. So get off my bollocks before you even start, all right? I can't go Saturday and I'm sorry. Do you know what? Some people wake me if I go, they go, what's this prick doing at the game? Then if I don't go, they go, um, why weren't you there Saturday, Dan? I can't win. But there you go. Listen, there's the bad news. I've come clean. I'm not going Saturday, but Kenny will call you in and there will be content on Lions TV as always. Enjoy it. If you get the chance, check out the fan score predictions that's gone out in and around this VT. And all that's left for me to say is I won't see you in Derby on Saturday, but I've been there the last two seasons to get off my bollocks. So anyway, safe journey if you are going to Derby on Saturday. Please bring home the three points. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.